The latest job numbers for Canada illustrate how the nature of work is changing. While the overall employment grew in July, full-time employment, that's full-time, actually shrunk by 17,000 positions. More and more companies are hiring self-employed contractors and part-time workers. The annual Academy of Management Conference continues today here in Vancouver. Andy Vandeven is presenting on this topic. He's a professor at the University of Minnesota. He's also the editor of the Academy of Management Discoveries and joins us here in Studio 10 this morning. Good morning and welcome to Vancouver. Thank you so much. It's an, a pleasure to be here. <laughs> uh, why are companies now increasingly more relying on temporary or part-time contractors? Well, since the recession of 2007 to uh, more recently, many companies laid off full-time workers. But then, since that time, they have begun to hire temporary as well as independent contractors to do much of their work. Why? It is cheaper. Bottom line. It costs less because you're not paying for insurance, you're not paying pensions, and you don't provide, for example, the health care insurance, so that in the end, for the employer, it is less costly, even though for the workers, there are ups. There are some positive things. You have some more flexibility in your work. You can adjust your hours to meet the job. You can be an Uber, for example, uh, driver. And that provides you more flexibility in your normal work life, but at the risk of less security in your work. And that's what I want to get to. What kind of effect is this this kind of non-permanent employee status? What does that have on the well-being of the workers? Well, this is a very good question that needs more study, and that's the purpose for our uh, journal, the Academy of Management Discoveries, calling for papers and research on this subject from throughout the world that would begin to examine these questions. Uh, among the uh, expectations of these consequences are uh, huge. On the one hand, you have many workers in a more flexible, adaptable work. But on the other hand, you have a greater disparity that's going on between the employers as well as the uh, workers who are on independent contract. They are probably earning even less than the part-time workers or the full-time workers, certainly, so, at various jobs. So this, would, this would, would contribute to income inequality, wouldn't it? I would say yes. And of course, uh, that is not going to be true for every single person. That's instead a population statistic. Professor, what, what implications do these changes have for the, for the broader economy then? Well, there are, number one, the income disparity is a, is a huge issue. The second issue, I think, too, is that there are, well, income Income disparity is associated with many social ills. Income disparity is also uh, very much uh, affecting the ability of people to sense their career. The idea of a job or a career is kind of transforming where many workers, particularly those in the 20 to 30-year-old range, have no don't have the sense of career, of an occupation, of a profession, that uh, many of us older members, <laughs> older generation, uh, have been exposed to. And because they don't have the security of full-time employment and, and the benefits you've already mentioned associated with that, health care, pensions, what, yep. whatnot, what's going to happen when this generation reaches the age of 65 or 70, when they're thinking about retirement, if they don't have that social safety net to fall back upon, they're going well, to be responsible for that themselves, aren't they? Pretty much, especially since the uh, safety net from different governments is, seems to be declining when it comes to providing the kind of support system that's necessary in Social Security Administration and so forth. Uh, there's that issue. And then there's the issue that individuals are going to be working longer. And yeah. retirements are not occurring at the rate they used to be at 65. Instead, it's more 70, 75. And after re so-called retirement of a job, there will, there will be more and more people being independent contractors. What is this growing inequality in terms of income? What is that going to mean for future consumer spending? 
that's, I would guess, just if you think about it, if there is less money for you, the uh, purchasing power is declining, uh, at least for the vast majority of individuals. And for the very rich, of course, it's <laughs> going to be quite, quite a different market. But for the vast majority of people, the expectation is you're going to have to take care of your immediate needs. And so uh, um, recreational spending and th those kinds of issues will probably be having to decrease. Final question, does this concern you about the future? It, it concerns us greatly. Um, we are educators. We are teachers of students who are facing a very different future from the future that we saw when we were going to college or high school. And so as a consequence, uh, yes, we have to be very much concerned about preparing our students for more flexible, adaptable work, but also to begin to encourage governments and organizations, employers, to begin to address these inequality issues. Andy Van Deven, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you so much. Enjoy your time at the conference. Enjoy British Columbia. Thank you. Andy Vandeven, professor at the University of Minnesota. He speaks today at the annual Academy of Management Conference, which wraps up tomorrow here in Vancouver. You know, more than 10,000 academics and experts are expected to be in attendance.